This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HP Touchpad. HP's new 9.7 inch tablet that competes with, well obviously the iPad, the Honeycomb tablets, and even the smaller Blackberry Playbook. Right now we're in the web browser which is actually showing the product itself and this is a full web kit, full HTML web browser with Adobe Flash support and Flash support's pretty good, we'll show you that in a bit. It's a fairly clean design, largish bezel over here, this is your home button a la iPad and also like the original WebOS phones too and that will take you out of here and into card view which is like your desktop but you can also just swipe up and do that and as you can see you got cards here just like in WebOS phones. Here is a 1.3 megapixel webcam that works with Skype video. It doesn't do anything else. You can't take pictures or anything like that. And if we take a look at the back there is no camera. And as you can see, this is gloss piano black plastic, and I just cleaned this before we started this video, but just carrying this a couple of rooms away to shoot this video, it got all gummy again. So, if you like your tablet clean and pretty, this is going to be a bit of a frustration for you. Keep it in the case. As you can see from the side, it's about a little over a half an inch thick, and it, it's a nice looking tablet, rounded, it feels good in the hand. Despite the fact it's slippery plastic, it, it's thick enough that you can grip it and the curves are comfortable, so I actually like the ergonomics of this tablet. You've got two stereo speakers right here with Beats Audio, very good sounding audio. Your micro USB port for copying files to it, and you'll also plug the charger into it, and it comes with a charger that's just a little bit bigger than the Prees, and it looks a lot like the Prees. And up top here we've got the volume controls, and this funny little thing that pops up and that's because they had no place to put the barcode and serial number information. Would be a convenient place to stick a SIM card slot though, wouldn't it? Or an expansion card slot, but this does not have an expansion card slot. It has either 16 or 32 gigs of memory. Power button is right here. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right there. Microphone here. This is what the touchpad comes in. It's a very nice box, really heavy box, and it opens like a drawer. And inside here you get your USB cable, which is again just like the WebOS phone USB cable. Any USB cable will work with this. We've tried a couple already. And here is your charger, which is like a taller version of the Palm WebOS charger. And this is 5.3 volts and 2 amps output. If you plug in a lower amp charger, it'll say this might not charge. You can give it a try if you want, but you really should use the right charger, which is more sophisticated than most electronics. And here you just get some documentation. So in early reviews much has been made of the fact that this sometimes lags and yes it does. Uh, it's not terrible though and we'll take a look at that and as we use it you can judge for yourself how much it's lagging or not lagging. And also the pre-release reviews actually didn't have the final software in terms of things like the marketplace, Kindle application and some others which are now available. So first we're going to take a look at HP App Catalog formerly known as the Palm app catalog. Connecting over Wi Fi. This is a Wi Fi only tablet. It's Wi Fi 80211 BGN and it's dual band. And my god, it has good Wi Fi. It's amazing the range on this thing. So, as you can see, now we actually have the pivot interface, which just got introduced today, launch day for the tablet. And this is a beautiful magazine like presentation that shows you what's going on this month. This explains what pivot is. That's basically a magazine that'll show you what's up. And this shows you what's here, like they're featuring Kindle, um, some other apps, the TED app, EA Need for Speed, which we're going to take a look at, game, Facebook for WebOS. And you can actually tap on these things to jump around and to get an application. So if you're reading about something that's featured, say I've already installed this and it says launch right here. That's the HP Movie apps, which is a, powered by Roxio now and wasn't available on the beginning of launch day. You know, so I want to get this application right here. It says free. I just tap it. It starts installing it. It does not take me out of this interface, which is really nice. installs it in the background. And then when it's done, if I want to run it right away, I could hit launch. So this gives you some focus on some featured apps every month. It's nicely done. If you want to see just the plain old market, here it is right here. Very similar to WebOS phones for those of you who own them. So you can see I've run a search for touchpad applications because there's no separate category right now. Once I've searched for touchpad applications, however, it's nice that it filters it out. So I don't have to look at every single touchpad application. Not that there are that many, there's about 300 at launch. 
But you can see it filters up by business, music, entertainment, education, books, games, all that kind of stuff. And you can filter by free, paid, new, all that kind of thing. So let's take a look at what's available in entertainment. Halo Stats for Touchpad, Allo Cine, Guardian News Hub, Truth or Dare, Tech Tray, My Q Manager for Netflix. Most of these are pay for apps. They're not hugely expensive, but you know, a buck, two bucks in that category is a couple of free ones. And if we take a look at news apps, those generally should be free. Again, we've got News Republic now, Guardian News again, Fortune Magazine. Tech Tray, Quaker HD, Business Applications, and the games category, not a lot of Tier 1 games at launch. we got Paratroopers HD, uh, none of these are free just about, by the way, Sparkle HD, Coloring Book HD, Differences is free. 99 cents, $2.99, $1.99. Right now, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is the, the top tier game, and that is $10. Got a couple of hidden object games Serpent of Isis, Atlantis Sky Patrol. Push to pop. Hopefully, we'll see more in the market. Right now, it's not that exciting. And if you're interested in something, you just tap on it. And the interface is really nice. They've got the positive negative bubbles over here, show you how many star ratings. Now, this, the market is so new, there's not a lot of ratings for a lot of these applications, but that will become populated and tells you what it's compatible with touchpad, the version number, the date, the size. You've got some screenshots up here, a description, and if there were reviews, they would be over here. And if you want it, you just tap on the button right here, free, and it downloads it. You can also bookmark apps, as you just probably saw. And then we can launch it by tapping the launch button. And this is the typical WebOS 3 interface on a tablet. We've got the three pane view, the same thing you're going to see, say, in the email client we'll show you soon. And you, you can grab these little handles and shift them around if you want to see that in full page view, for example. Grab that over. And it takes up more of the screen so you can read the full article. And if there's a hyperlink, you can tap on it. And it'll take you to that article. So that's News Republic, and that's what it's like to download an application. When you're done with it, you just swipe up, it turns it into a card. If you don't want this application anymore, you want to kill it completely, conserve some memory, just swipe up like that, it's dead. Now, if all that looks awful familiar to you, that's because you've seen the same thing on the BlackBerry Playbook 7-inch tablet. I'll tell you what, Palm invented the interface first with the card metaphor over here. BlackBerry just kind of absconded with it. But I have to say that theirs is actually more quick and more responsive. You can see you can just get in and out of things very quickly right here. I'm in my ebook reader application right now. Swipe up to put that away. I want to look at the application marketplace. We're right here. Very quick. My video player. You can jump into an HD video. It's a 1080 video. Responds quickly to taps. And we can toss that one up there too. And with this interesting way of doing things, and it's the bottom bar here maybe is a little bit more obvious too. You have your icon drawer that's typical for recent BlackBerry phones, and you drag that up and you have categories here, slightly stolen from WebOS, but maybe made a bit more intuitive in the process. And now we're back on the touchpad, and you can see scrolling speed. Now, you know, HP can also control that. Maybe they think that you shouldn't be able to fly back and forth so fast. Sometimes it seems to miss a tap, unfortunately. We'll go into our video player. Our photo viewer. So, speed difference, you, you can notice a bit of a speed difference. It's not quite as super snappy, but hey, this is also very usable, and HP says a firmware update's coming soon to make it even quicker. You've got a shortcut launch bar here with your 
top applications, web browser, email, your calendar, your messaging, which includes Skype video messaging. And boy, this has a nice camera on it. We were really pleased with Skype video calling on this. Shortcut to the photo and video viewer. And right here, this takes you to everything that is separated into categories. Again, if you know WebOS, you already be familiar with this. This is the built-in applications over here. This is everything I've downloaded. And you can assign anything you want to favorites, just dragging it there. And this is a myriad listing of settings. You've got Bluetooth here, you've got backup, control date and time, device information, sounds and ringtones. You can turn Beats audio on and off, though it sounds pretty much the same either way, and sounds good, so we're not complaining. Wi-Fi, VPN, system updates, just type settings, which I'm going to show you right now because that's pretty interesting stuff. Again, it's taking a little while to load the preferences for some reason. So Just Type is the universal search that's built into WebOS. And it doesn't just search Google, your contacts, and your calendar, and not much else. You can search applications, contacts. Google, which is by default, if you type something in, just hit the Enter key instead of using the pop-up list of search results. You can search your calendar, email, bookmarks, maps, Wikipedia, Twitter, CNN, Amazon, IMDb, YouTube video search, HP catalog search, News Republic, and as other applications come out, they can support this too, and they'll be searchable. And from the Just Type search bar, you can actually type in the, the subject, save a new message. You can create a new event, new email, new message, new memo, or update your Facebook status. And here's the Just Type bar right here, so you can see. And we'll type in Cute Cat, and it's going to default the searching to Google if I hit the Enter key. I can hide the keyboard right here, and you can see I can go to all these sources as well. It's not coming up with any number values yet, but if I had found local matches, it would have. So say I want to search YouTube for Cute Cats, tap more because the list is so long. Do that. And it will take us to YouTube using the web browser. Since this has full flash, you get the full YouTube desktop experience. So this how it takes you in. So here we have a whole lot of cute cats. And while we're in YouTube, we're going to watch a YouTube video that's playing using Adobe Flash. By default, you're going to have 360 key here. This is new with Android. And if you pop out, it goes to 480. You can use the resolution selector. Let's go up to 720. You can see how loud the speakers are. I'm actually turn the volume down a bit. So that's 720 right now. Well, let's go to full screen. That's full screen 720p flash video. That is really good playing on YouTube. Sex we don't want to have with women, but we have to. All due to what you guys do. And we do it again and again. Hey, hey, hey. If I want to hear you talk, I will shut my... Obviously that's better than the iPad because the iPad doesn't play flash at all. And I find that that's a bit smoother than my Android Honeycomb tablets. Which, they just barely get along in 720p. They're great at 480p full screen. But that is really smooth. So flash video in, the, in YouTube works quite well. Uh, some interactive stuff for kids works well that don't depend on keyboard and mice for, for interaction. Uh, Amazon Instant Watch Video unfortunately does not work reliably on this. Sometimes we got it to play inside a window in the browser. It's usually popping out to full screen mode would cause some blockiness and blacking out. And sometimes we actually couldn't get it to play at all. So can't recommend this one right now for Amazon Video On Demand. And there is no Netflix yet. Don't know if it's coming, but we don't have it yet. In terms of performance, there's a lot going on under the hood here. We have a dual-core dual core 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon CPU with Adreno 220 graphics, which should be good for some gaming. Uh, again, there are not a lot of 3D games out right now. We will show you a Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, though. But it's definitely good enough to handle video, and video playback is something that this is good at. And we're going to take a look at the Photos and Videos application right here. And you can see it has neat integration. We've got stuff that's on my touchpad, the stuff's on Facebook, various albums that I might have online or locally, and we're going to look at stuff that's locally right now and look at some high-quality movie trailers. And we're going to take a look at a 1080p high-profile 
video trailer. Now this is this is pretty demanding stuff. You can see here though, this is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, it's 1024 by 768 and so you're not getting the widescreen view, it's automatically stretching it and clipping the side. How many men have you shot? Shot? Or killed? Let us restrict it to kill so that we may have a manageable figure. Cockburn. I'm looking for the man who killed my father. The man's name is Tom Cheney, and I need somebody to go after him. That's full 1080, which is higher than the resolution of the actual display and is doing it no problem. It's kind of overkill. You really don't need something like 1080. And here we'll take a look at some 720p video, also high profile, more appropriate to the screen size, and you can see how that plays. Perfectly fluid. Really impressed with this. And how do we get that on here? We use the micro USB cable that comes with it and plug it into our computer. It works with Macs, works with Windows, it just mounts as a mash storage device. You can just drag it really anywhere you want on the storage area. You don't have to create any special folders or anything like that. We did notice it was occasionally a little bit buggy. We had copied some videos and some music files over to this and they didn't appear and even a reboot didn't bring them back but we plugged in the USB cable again and unplugged it, didn't actually copy anything and then it found the files as it should. Speaking of music, got a nice music player on here. There's a music player that's built in. You can see you get some album art over here. You can list by artist, by songs, by album, create playlists, genre. And we'll check out a tune. Again, really nice sounding Beats Audio stereo speaker. It also sounds good through headphones. And yes, it plays in the background, so we can do that and go shopping for some apps. And then you see the playing icon right here. We can control it from up here. So you don't actually have to go back into the music application. Now, WebOS and its Synergy is known for integration of pretty much every type of account in the world, and it really does a very good job of integrating contacts from Exchange, from your, your Google contacts, Facebook, you name it, your social networking without creating duplicates. And you can see all the accounts that are supported here. We have AIM, Box.net, Dropbox, Email, which is POP3, IMAP, Exchange, you name it, it supports it. Google accounts, including getting your Google Calendar down and your Google Contacts, LinkedIn, there's your Exchange, MobileMe, Photobucket, Skype, Snapfish, Yahoo, and then you can even search for more. So it does a really nice job of integrating all that stuff in and then putting it into your contacts. And all that nice synergy leads into email. You can pick up accounts from your email from all sorts of accounts and you can see linked contact information. And here you have a three-pane view. You've got your accounts over here, and you can see inbox, drafts, outbox, personal. If it's IMAP, you can see your IMAP folders, for example. Here's a list of my mail messages, and then if I tap on a message, you can see. So you can see an email here, beautifully rendered HTML email, and if you want it to be bigger, you just drag the bar over here. A little bit hard to control sometimes, though. So now it's bigger. And then you can drag it all the way to here to see it full screen. Back, you can move it all the way. So it's nicely done. An easy inbox view here of the, all the subjects that are available. Definitely like the email client. Something else we like about WebOS are the notification and control systems up here. If a notification comes up, it's not going to blop in the middle of the screen and interrupt you, and it's going to do a little bit more than Android does, which just has little icons. It's actually going to banner scroll up here for a minute or two, telling you got a new email message or a new, um, say, Skype message from somebody, whatever it happens to be. And here you can control, as you saw, the music playback. You can get information if you have any things you need to deal with there, like I have an account error I need to fix. Here I see Wi-Fi status, my battery, and here is your quick access to battery status, Wi-Fi, VPN, Bluetooth, airplane mode, turning on rotation lock, which can be a good idea because this thing is really annoying. It likes to flip-flop the screen all the time, barely move it, and it's flop changing orientation on you. And you can mute sound quickly as well. 
It has an IPS display, again it's 1024 by 768 pixels, which is the same as the iPad, also the same size, 9.7 inch display. It has very good viewing angle since it's IPS, and it's, it's a reasonably bright and colorful display. I, I wouldn't mind if it looked a little bit sharper, but part of that is probably from porting WebOS, which is designed for small screens, over to the, the big tablet. They may have some work to do there to sharpen up some of the graphics and things and maybe make icons look a little bit cooler. And now to compare it to the iPad 2, you can see they're just about the same size. Very similar design. But when you look at them thickness-wise, obviously the iPad is going to be a lot thinner. It's 1.34 inches by just over half an inch, and the touchpad weighs 1.6, 1.7 pounds versus uh, 1.3 pounds for the iPad. So for built-in applications, we get the web browser that you saw. I'm mostly looking at YouTube stuff, but it's a very good web browser that renders sites reasonably accurately. The email client we saw. You've got a very nice calendar client. Starts out in day view. Takes a minute to load and you can see all my different calendars are up here color coded and by tapping them I can turn the display of those items on and off. So I've got my Facebook calendar, my US holidays, my WebOS stuff, my Gmail stuff all in here. And if you want to see the month view if we can see it's Independence Day. And it takes a minute again to load, which is a little bit odd. And you can tap on that and see more details. Or you can edit it. And if you edit it, you can see here that you can add a note, add a reminder, all that kind of stuff. So that's nice. We'd like to see that be a little bit faster too, though. We've got a messaging application. This is where you're going to do your Skype calling and Skype video calling. And you can also do things like AIM and Google Talk. No MSN yet. But we've got a memo application, Quick Office, which is a viewer for MS Office files. And you can see, you can use this with cloud services like Google, Dropbox, MobileMe, or you can just go with the stuff that's on your device. And that took some time, didn't it? Looks nice, though. And again, that's a viewer. And you can print. This does support printing to HP Wi-Fi printers. Uh, we tried with a network printer that was made by Konica Minolta. Didn't work, so we assume you have to stick with HP Wi-Fi printers for compatibility. So that's a quick office viewer. We've also got maps here. This is Bing Maps. This is Bing Maps, and if you want to search for something, say like movies. And you can see all the movie theaters that are nearby for any given location you're looking at on the map. And you can call them if you happen to be using a WebOS phone that, that speaks to this. You can get the address, otherwise you can get directions. And you can bookmark this as a favorite location. GPS on this works very well, even indoors it got a fix right away. And you've got phone and video calls, and you know you don't actually have to use this with the phone to do that. That's actually how you'll, you'll work with Skype, say for Skype to Skype calls, not calling landline or mobile numbers, that kind of thing you can do using this application. But of course, again, this does integrate with Palm's latest WebOS phones, the Vera, the Palm Pre that's coming, the Palm Pre 3 that's coming out. And you'll be able to share information, send bookmarks back and forth, initiate a call over here, and have it go to your phone, for example. Some cool stuff like that. Interesting for the 2.1% or so of you who are actually using WebOS phones right now. We've got the Kindle application, which actually does work. There's a, it's a placeholder application that's available for download or now. We've got Facebook and YouTube, which actually just takes you to the YouTube full website. All your downloads go in your downloads. Then we're going to take a look at something fun that we're going to take a look at Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. So this is the big 3D launch title for the touchpad. Obviously this is accelerometer based. And 
little bit twitchy. More so than usual for Need for Speed. Well, it's pretty good. Once you get used to the accelerometer, it's, it's really fun. Graphics look nice. What about older WebOS games that were made for phones? I've found that the ones from GameLoft will run full screen, which is nice, instead of in a teeny little window like most of the WebOS for phone applications. And we we'll take a look at that. Graphics are not going to be as sharp, obviously, because the higher resolution is stretched out here, but it works. Here we know in the cutscene. It looks a little bit jaggy, but it, it works. And this is the exact same game that I was playing on my Palm Pre Plus originally. Skip the rest of the cutscene. And the controls are really great in this game, actually. Frame drop there. So as you can see, it plays pretty smoothly, but when we get into some firefights here, it 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 starts to drop frames like crazy for some reason. So I'm I'm not sure how playable I would actually describe this as being. It's designed for the Palm Pre phone game. Now what happens if you run a phone app that, that isn't meant for the touchpad? You'll see it running in a little window like this. There's no option for doubling or anything like that, so you're actually going to interact with this little virtual teeny window. That works, but it's kind of strange to be using it in a teeny window like that. Well, let's take a look at some weather that is meant for the touchpad. This is pretty cool. And it's working on loading. It's actually going to load a local webcam view from a weather station in this cute little window over here. So it's nicely done. You've got three-day forecast over here. You can load multiple locations and switch and see webcams from each as well. Whether any alerts are up here, and if you want to see a radar view, you can do that as well. So that's kind of nifty. Hopefully we'll see more apps like that. And we've downloaded some other applications. There's already USA Today. It looks a lot like the Android version, the iPad version, Sports Illustrated Magazine, um, Pandora. We've got here, like, it was preloaded on it. iHeartRadio is also available. So we're seeing some apps. You know, and to be fair, this thing has only been out a half a day so far. We we'll just have to wait and see how many more apps come out. There's a USA Today application, looking pretty nice. Tap on a news item. And read the article. That behaves nicely enough. And if you want to see, again, full article spread across. We really wanted to love the, the touchpad. I'm a big fan of WebOS. I, I think they've always been a little hobbled by their hardware, but it's a brilliant and friendly operating system. And unfortunately, I'm seeing lags here, as you probably noticed, too. Uh, some user interface inconsistencies, occasional glitches, it misses some screen taps. And hopefully, HP is going to address that quickly with a firmware update. They haven't said exactly when they're going to come out with that. But right now, it's a little rough around the edges. It makes Android look polished in terms of consistency of user interface and, and speed and performance, at least if you're looking at hand Honeycomb 3.1. Again, hopefully it will improve. Uh, the other thing that we're not so keen on is no HDMI out. Don't know if there's an adapter that's going to come for that, maybe MHL based. There's no rear camera. I don't know how many of you are taking photos, but I actually find that I like taking photos and particularly shooting video with tablets. You get a huge viewfinder and it's a fairly stable object so it takes very smooth video alas there's nothing here and while fingerprints aren't everything just in the period of time that we've been doing this review you can see what this looks like and it's also very hard to clean up even using something like clear screen or any of the cleaning products meant for consumer electronics you so get yourself a case or live with that 
It's $499 for the 16 gig Wi-Fi model, $599 for the 32 gig Wi-Fi model. It's available now. And it has a 1024 by 768 IPS display, again a dual core 1.2 GHz Snapdragon CPU. Front facing video chat camera, no rear camera, no HDMI out. Does have dual band Wi Fi 802.11n, Bluetooth, and a GPS as well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review of the HP Touchpad tablet.